have you here for this first panel. Nine things you need to know before starting a game company. I'm sure you guys have a couple of those items in your head already. But here to tell you a little bit more is Rupert Magnod. Good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody doing? Doing all right? Yeah. See some cool yeah. stuff? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So let me get the clicker here because I can't like blink or... All right, so uh, my name is Rupert Magnot. I am the CXO for Burnout Game Ventures, where we incubate game ideas from zero to sales in six months or less. More than an incubator or accelerator, we invest in and provide daily hands-on mentoring to entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, and video game simulation and VR. Uh, one of the, I, I, I got introduced to video games back in the mid-90s uh, on a professional level when I had a, I started a simulation company and we were, we were basically going after the arcade market. And I did business with companies like Infograms and, and uh, uh, Hasbro Interactive. Plus we developed our own content for our simulation systems. Most recently I taught uh, project management to aspiring game producers at Full Sail's Game Design Master's Degree program for six, more than six years. The former students of which are managing, helping manage a couple billion dollars of game IP. Um, and then in addition to that, I've helped hundreds of tech companies get started from in, in all kinds of different industries. And I'll tell you, and, and I started my first business when I was 20, and my, my, my mother never forgave me. Um, so I, I've seen it all. And, you know, I've seen so many divorces, and bankruptcies, and uh, unfortunately suicides from people who start businesses without doing it right. And, and we all make mistakes. I, I've certainly made my share. And uh, so I just wanted to impart that starting a business is serious business, okay? So um, I was asked to come here and say, okay, tell you what, what were the nine things that I think you should know before you start your game company, all right? So to get started, the first thing you need to ask yourself, the first thing you need to know is why, okay? So people ask, well, because I want to. But the thing is, is that's not a reason for, for a game company, all right? Because you have uh, playing games, and you have making games, and you have making money making games, all right? And the transition from making games to making money making games is just as wide as it is between playing games and making games, okay? Um, Making, you know, 59% of us play games, that's great. The thing is, is making games is, understand, I've, I've worked at NASA, I've done DARPA, I've done all kinds of stuff, and I'll tell you right now, making a game is right up there with all those others. From a project management standpoint, and from a technological standpoint, it's one of the most STEM-intensive industries and, and endeavors that you can possibly imagine. So, uh, the thing is, is so making a game, yeah, great. Get a couple guys together, a couple people together, you know, some artists and programmers and designers and whatnot, and, you know, get together, meet, meet, meet 10 hours a week for a couple of years and develop your game and get it on Steam. And, yeah, we got our game on Steam. Everybody come vote for us on Greenlight. But the thing is, is that's great. Please do that. Please do that. We need more people doing that, especially ladies. The thing is, is... If you want to make money making games, you've got to think completely different. Yes, you start with that. But the thing is, is the average video game costs seven to $800,000 to develop. And a lot of people say, I spent $1,000 for this laptop, and I paid this $30 a month for my Maya LT, and you know it didn't cost me that much. But the thing is, is if you want to make money making games, you're starting a business. You need to think like a business person. A business person will sit there and say, well, wait a minute, you're making 10 bucks an hour at KFC. You just spent a thousand hours the last two months, you know, last few months making your game. You just put $10,000 into your game. Okay? That's how a business person thinks. And that's why games are so expensive, because it takes, you multiply that by, you know, 15 people over the three years period of time, and there you go. Okay? So... In project, starting a business is a project, and in project management, we have what we consider strategic considerations. Strategic considerations mean if you don't have one of these, you've got no reason to start a business. Okay, and there's nine of them. I'm not going to go through all nine. I could do that in, in an hour. 
But the, the two most important ones for starting a game company, first one is market demand. Market demand is simply, if you build it, they will come, okay? But unless you're Activision or Bioware or EA or Naughty Dog or anybody like that, it is a field of dreams, okay? By the way, I'm here to tell you what you need to hear, not what I'm going to assume you want to hear, okay? <laughs> so, unless you're, you know, making Assassin's Creed or Final Fantasy 21, right, it's, it's a field of dreams. Now, having said that, because who's, who's going to buy your game if they don't even know who you are, right? If you don't have that brand. But, having said that, it's not impossible. It just makes it harder. The good news is that all the digital distribution platforms, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, um, iOS, Android, Steam, they're looking for original content. And they're looking to you, the indie game developers, for that content. Okay? And I'm not talking about, oh, I like this feature in Need for Speed, and this feature in Colin McRae, and this feature in Formula One, and I'm going to put these three features together into a game. That's not original, okay? We're talking about coming up with a new world of goo, new limbo, right? Coming up with something, the new, the new Flappy Bird or whatever. So come up with something original, and then let's go from there, okay? And if you don't know what original is, ask your friends. But ask around. Hey, have you seen this before? What do you think? So come up with some original content. The second thing is, of course, customer, con uh, customer request. Customer request is exactly that. It's a customer saying, here's my money, make me a game. Right? And a lot of people get started in games that way. The thing is, is again, it costs a lot of money to make a game. So, you know, it's, it, it does work, but maybe you're better off just starting out as a hobby and creating the games and getting some experience, so then now people will be saying, oh, you've got experience making games, here's my money, okay? So, if you don't have either of these, then you really don't need to start a company. You can still do it. Make your game, do all that, have fun for a couple of years, get the experience under your belt, put it on your resume and all that, release your game and so forth, that's great. But that's still not a business, okay? Oh, you follow? So, uh, so let's assume that you got a great original idea, okay? Great original idea. Who's going to help you make your game? Okay. <laughs> so in video games, there's right now there's um, over 350,000 people in the world that are making video games, and there's only two that I know of, two, that have made money making video games by themselves, and that was the person who did Minecraft, and then the Vietnamese guy who did uh, Flappy Bird. Who, who basically dropped, took it off the market, dropped it because he was he was feeling bad about how addicted people were getting to his game, even though it was making 50 grand a day. So, Lone Wolf, no, go home. I mean, it's great if you want to do the Game Jam. By the way, the Game Jam's coming, the Global Game Jam's coming up at the end of the month. So join the local Orlando chapter if you want to get experience making games. But the thing is, is Lone Wolf ain't gonna work, right? You need a team. Okay. Now, a team means you need people who have the various levels of expertise. So you need designers to design the game. You need artists to create the environments and the characters and the, the models and everything else in the game. You need programmers to be able to make the, to actually literally create the game and make it work the way you want. You need audio people to do the sounds. You need you know you need a producer to manage the team and run the team and make sure it's done on time and on budget. Okay, so make sure you have. <laughs> this team together. I've seen four people do a great game in, in, in a weekend, right? But the thing is, is that's, that game's still not going to be able to make money. Again, we're talking about starting a business making games, which means cash flow. If you don't have cash flow, you don't have a business, okay? So, so let's assume you have a great original idea. I know all y'all have great original ideas, okay? You have a great original idea. You have a team together to do it all. Now what do you need to know? Well, you need to know what. What resources are you going to utilize in order to create your game, right? So we're talking things like hardware and software. So you can go to Craigslist and spend a couple hundred bucks and get a, a decent laptop, Alienware laptop to create your game. But if you want to get into VR, now you're really starting up the price because of the, you need the graphic cards to handle it. Uh, you could get a, you can build your own some companies are offering uh, some, some real beastly uh, desktops that go from 
2,000 up to $9,000, you know, it's up to you. But, and then software, fortunately Unity and, and Unreal within the last couple of years decided to go free. And, uh, but if you want to make money with their games, you have to make sure you either have the pro versions or, or pay them uh, 5%, which I'm happy to do, frankly, because people buy my game, 95% of $1 is better than 100% of zero. <laughs> and then um, uh, software development kits, I mean, PlayStation, 1200 uh, uh, bucks per seat. I mean, you've got all kinds of different costs involved, so you need to understand what those costs are. But then once you, once you have all that, or once you have access to all that, use your school stuff. If you're students, get, use your student copies for everything. Just make sure that you go to professional copies before you release, okay? Make it legit. So you got a great game idea, you've got a great team, you have access to all the resources, what do you need to know now? So what you need to know now is your plan, all right? Now I'm gonna tell you this right now, if you do not plan your game the way I'm going to describe it right now, be prepared to throw 50% of all your time, all your money, and all your effort out the window. Absolutely guaranteed. Absolutely guaranteed. Okay. So if you're comfortable doing that, knock yourself out. Okay. If you want to be in business, you cannot, you cannot afford to do that. All right. So there's four components in the planning. Uh, in, in planning, and we call those in project management, we call these the four primary constraints. And the first one is scope, okay? Scope is the work and how it's done, right? And so what we're talking about is we're talking about the core features of the game, okay? Core features like, what's the gameplay like? What's the art style like? What, uh, what mechanics are you using in the game? What, um, you know, what's the user interface? How does the, how does the player interact? So these are things that you need to have in the game that you need to understand. So you do it by determining what your objectives and your requirements are for the game, which you get from needs, wants, and expectations of all the stakeholders. Okay. By the way, I'm teaching a course on project management, so if y'all are interested in getting all that, right? it's a two-week thing because I used to teach this in a month at the master's degree level, so you can imagine what what all is involved. Um, so in any case, so. Understand the work. Now, how it's done is basically your project management methodologies. So, everybody's talking about, oh, Scrum this and Scrum that, and I'm a certified Scrum master and whatnot. And then I ask them, so what are, what are your NWEs? And they're like, what? And I'm like, NWEs. If you don't know NWEs, how can you develop a backlog? Right? You've got to know the basics. If you don't know the basics, it's like martial arts, it's like music, it's like anything else. If you don't know the basics, Good luck being successful trying anything else, okay? So uh, what we do at, at uh, Burnout is all our team, we got about 100 people working on sitting on uh, eight different pro nine different projects for six teams. And what we do is we have, uh, we start out with Waterfall. Waterfall is basically plan it all up front first and then, then get to it. What we do is we set aside the first 20% of the schedule to do nothing but planning. So we plan everything, and I'm gonna talk about that in a second. And then once we have all the plan in place, then we go into an agile environment where we're, we're doing two week sprints, boom, boom, every two weeks. Okay, this is what's got to get done and so forth. And we're interacting with our, with our stakeholders and we're moving forward. Uh, and the plan's never done until after you release anyway, because hopefully you're updating the plan. So uh, the four components of the plan, of the scope, are, first of all, your game design document. You have to have a GDP. A GDD is basically a document that says, this is the game, this is the genre we're doing, this is the gameplay, uh, these are the physics we're going to be using in the game, the art style that's in the game, this is the experience that the player is going to experience in, in interfacing with the game and playing it and so forth, all that. It's typically about a 50-page document, okay? But don't scrimp on that. Don't scrimp on that. The second thing is the tech design document. The tech design document is basically written by your programmers because it's a documentation that of the architecture, the software architecture of your game. So it basically says this is this is how we have to code the game in order for it to work the way it's supposed to in the game design document. Okay, so you do that. Then the next thing I strongly suggest is a work breakdown structure. A work breakdown structure is like an Excel spreadsheet or a, 
Microsoft Project uh, file or whatever, and you're breaking down, you're, you're starting out with your milestones and you're breaking down the levels of all the work that you have to do. Okay, A five month game development effort is typically 12, 12 to, to 3,200 uh, individual tasks. I know for a fact EA, uh, when they made FIFA, it was over 2 million tasks. Okay, But the thing is, is they're making billions of dollars because they do this. All right. If they didn't do this, they wouldn't be making that money. I guarantee it. So, um, so the WDS is a breakdown of all your tasks. Do not scrimp on your planning, people. It's real simple. Are you willing to spend 100% at 50% capacity in, in productivity, or would you rather spend 90% productivity planning and then 90% productivity in execution? It's your choice. Okay. Uh, the last thing is your capacity plan. The capacity plan is basically everybody on your team saying, oh, I can work two hours on Sunday and three hours on Wednesday and four hours on Friday, etc. Then you can take that information and go to your work breakdown structure because that tells you how long it takes you to do it each task, and now you have your backlog for, for your sprints. Okay? So these are the four things. If you don't do these four things, <laughs> Have fun. That's all I can tell you. Have fun. Okay. So that's the work and how it's done. Uh, the next thing is schedule. Schedule is real simple. Schedule. You start with your milestones. So in the game development, you have these uh, these five milestones. You've got the prototype, which is your vertical slice. It's just to say, you don't even have assets in it. You just have like boxes or something like that that are moving around. And that's basically something that says, does it work? Can we make this game? Okay. Then your alpha is basically the entire game, you know, maybe 80%, and that alpha is basically, this is what it looks like, this is how it operates, you know, and you play through it and so forth. Uh, down on the first floor in the Indie Game Showcase, um, Major Games, uh, the, uh, Gabe over there is the uh, lead designer for Major Games, they have uh, Bit Evolution, which we just did our 100,000th download, and then Vector Mirror we're getting ready to release on both Xbox and PlayStation VR, and the vector mirror that we're playing downstairs is actually a pre-production alpha prototype. And it's, you play through the whole thing. And it's, it's fun, you can, see, you can see what it worked, how it works, and how to interact. And then you can also get feedback from that, which we're also doing. Beta is, is basically adding in all the other features that, of your game, putting it all together, and then testing it, testing it, testing it. You either you know, find, find 50 to 100 people to test it and give you feedback on it, or you come to BGB or anybody else that, that does testing for games, and you get that feedback. And then, and then you start implementing that feedback and, up and making the game better. And then gold is basically, let's, let's polish the heck out of this game. Let's, right? let's get this thing polished up, make it working as good as we can, and then get it out the door. So that's scope and schedule. Then we have cost. Cost is pretty simple. It's, you know, the hardware and software, rent. I mean, if you're working on making your game no, and nobody's paying you to do that, how are you going to eat? You know, pizza and Mountain Dew cost money, all right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you want to get that, then maybe you're working at Home Depot or you're working at Best Buy or, or any place else, but you're, you're, you've got to work to pay your bills. So you have to take that into consideration based on the amount of time you're going to put into it. Then, of course, there's quality. Now, the funny thing about games is that quality in games is the exact opposite of what it is in the rest of the world, okay? Uh, in, 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 in games, they do quality control, but they call it quality assurance. They call it QA. And in games, basically, you're, you need to stick to your core features. And what they're doing in games is, the, the quality in games is basically, at what level of perfection are you willing to do without, okay? Because the reason why it takes three, four years for most indie developers to develop a game and release a game is because it's never perfect. They're like, oh, I gotta change this. Oh, this one pixel.